Day two in the bunker, the thrill of novelty is already wearing thin. I wake up with a stiff back and the distinct feeling that my sleeping bag has conspired with the concrete floor to ruin me. Breakfast is another can of beans, cold, because firing up the camp stove feels like too much effort for this level of culinary delight. I decide to explore the bunker more thoroughly. It's amazing how quickly four walls can start to close in on you. I find a corner stacked with old magazines, National Geographics from the 80s, a few Playboy issues that look like they've seen better days, and some conspiracy theory rags. I chuckle at the irony, these probably belong to the same people who built this place, convinced the government was out to get them. Now, I'm here, and the government might actually be gone. After lunch, more beans, now with a sprinkle of seasoning to spice things up, I tackle the water filtration system. It gurgles and spits like an old man at a deli, but it works. I'm starting to appreciate the simple joys, like not dying of dehydration. I also discover an old journal. The entries are mundane, notes about supply levels, maintenance logs, and occasional rants about the coming collapse. It's oddly comforting, realizing that the previous occupant had their own ways of coping. Misery loves company, even if that company is long gone. By mid-afternoon, boredom is setting in. I try the hand crank radio again. It's mostly static, but occasionally I catch snippets of some distant broadcast. It's either someone reading a grocery list or the world's most monotone DJ. Either way, it's a reminder that there's still something out there, beyond these walls. Dinner is, you guessed it, beans, this time with a side of canned peaches for a touch of variety. I try to read one of the old magazines, but my mind keeps drifting. What's happening up there? Is it even worth wondering? As night falls, I light another candle and settle in for another round of existential dread. The concrete feels a little less hostile tonight, or maybe I'm just too tired to care. Every noise still sets me on edge, but I'm starting to accept that this is my life now. It's a strange mix of peace and paranoia. Day two ends with a bit more resignation and a lot more questions. I'm beginning to understand why people lose track of time in places like this. Welcome to bunker life, where every day blurs into the next, and the only certainty is uncertainty.